Let's talk about multiplayer in GDevelop. GDevelop has a new system in place that makes setting up multiplayer really easy to do. It comes with its own lobby system, where players are authenticated and then joined together in lobbies so they can play together, handling all of the network trouble for you, and then with the help of an easy to use behavior and a bunch of new actions and conditions, multiplayer just works. So let's get into a real example. Here I have a little game where you can drag these blocks around and the objective is to try to get the ball into the hole. So I'm going to turn this into a two player experience. The first thing you need to set up is your lobby. In this case I just have a separate scene called lobby and a button for lobby. I have it set up so that when the lobby button is clicked we use the action open the lobbies which will open up this lobby screen and then players can choose their lobby. And the second event for when the lobby has started, so once all of the players ready up and the host has started the game, change the scene to the game scene. So we'll go from the lobby to the game scene. And at that point all of the players will be synced together and connected into a single lobby. So if I click to preview the game and go down to launch preview in, I can select multiple windows to open at one time. So if I open two windows, I can open multiple lobbies for myself, and I can join the same one, and ready up in both lobbies. Then I can press start. But the issue here is, if you see it, right now there's no connectivity between the two games. So let's explain how this works. When a lobby is created, the first person to join the lobby is considered the host and the host, or the first player, will be the server of the lobby. So when a lobby is created, the other games will have their global variables, scene variables, and the scene you're in synchronized with the first player. But all of the objects in each scene, including their variables, effects, and animations, are all controlled independently. So the two screens we just showed were synchronized in a lobby, but it was just the variables and the scene that were being shared. So inside this object, I can add the behavior for multiplayer object, and this will allow an object to be synchronized with other players in the lobby. This again includes the animations, the effects, the position, the variables, and everything else. So when I add this behavior to the object, I'm able to select the owner. So by default, the host is sending information to the other players to synchronize the games. but when you add this behavior to an object, then that player is now the one sending out information about an object and telling the other games what to do with it. So let's set this object to be controlled by the host, and then in the advanced options, I'm able to tell the game what to do if the player who owns the object drops out. And by default, the object just gets deleted. So now this large square is owned by the host. And I'll do the same thing with the other two objects as well. So now when I get the game set up, and I move the objects around, you can see them happening in the other game as well. Because player 1 is the owner of this object, so when player 1 changes the object in some way, it affects it on player 2's game. But, because player 2 doesn't own the object, you can see when I try to drag it, it snaps back in place. And that's because player 1 owns the object. So, player 1 is constantly telling player 2, hey the square goes here. Now if we want to change that, we can go to the game's events and set it up so that when an object gets dragged, the player dragging that object now becomes the owner. And I have a group for draggable objects, and in that group is the corner object and the large square. So now if it's being dragged, we'll use the action for ownership so we can change who owns the object. And I'll select draggable objects because that's the object group with both objects. So whoever's game it is that's running this event, that will be the player number that's chosen. And trigger once. So now, player 1 can still drag the object around, but if player 2 grabs a hold of it, now player 2 owns the object. So you're passing the ownership back and forth between both players. So now both players can play together. But if I press start, the ball isn't working yet because in this game's events, clicking the start button 
turns on the physics behavior and turns off the dragging behavior, but player two isn't the owner of that object. So player two is not allowed to change anything about objects owned by player one. So we need to change the ownership of the object in the same way that we did before. So when the start button is clicked, we'll change the ownership of all of the physics objects because I have a group with all of the physics objects in it, all of the physics objects are set to the player that pressed the start button. And for the reset, since it changes the position of the object and the behaviors, we'll need to do the same thing. So whichever player clicks reset, will take ownership of the objects and then perform those actions. So now when you start or reset the game, whichever player did it will take ownership of the objects and make the changes. So the three big things that you want to do in a multiplayer game, open and close the lobby, change who owns which object and how that affects the game, and send custom messages to other players. This action will allow you to send messages to all of the other players in the game that do very specific things. If you want the game to pause for all players at the same time, for example, you can send a message and call it pause, and then put whatever you want into the content, and then as a condition, you can check to see if that message was received and have that as one of the conditions to doing an action. So you can send a message to the other players and when they receive it, have them perform some kind of action, like pausing everybody's game. So the multiplayer feature in GDevelop brings a bunch of new actions and conditions along with that behavior that was shown earlier. And now in your game dashboard, there's a multiplayer option there that right now only lets you set up the number of players in your lobby, but this will eventually have more things as multiplayer develops more in GDevelop. The last big thing to talk about is who has access to the multiplayer feature in GDevelop. Multiplayer comes with hosting and bandwidth fees for lobbies, player accounts, and maintaining the infrastructure for thousands of potential players. But in GDevelop, everybody will have access to this feature. So everyone will be able to build and playtest their own multiplayer game. But to cover the cost of hosting these services, you'll need to get a subscription in order to get an unlimited number of lobbies. We'll link to the documentation about multiplayer in this video's description. But if you would like to learn more about GDevelop, then click on this.